with DJ Davi. I know Maya did and I did. We was jamming. I felt like I was back in the club in Okinawa, Japan, having the time of my life living my old days <laughs> man um so i hope you guys are enjoying your night tonight i hope you had a great tuesday today you are in for a treat we have a wonderful soul a wonderful spirit a wonderful human being on our show tonight and i hope that you guys are ready to meet maya stoyan clever boom, 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 boom. <laughs> welcome 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 maya Oh, hold on. Second. I got you on mute. There you go. Welcome, oh, Maya. <laughs> you missed my word. I did. I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was at the club. So thank you, DJ Davi. That was that was so much fun. I was dancing. In fact, I'm out of breath. I thought I recoup now. That was awesome. I, I felt the same way, Maya. Like I was jamming. Like it was all the right <laughs> hits. You know, like. That just got me like, you know, music is uh, very powerful, right? Like music can take you uh, to the next level in your day uh, when you're feeling down or it can take you to that place where you want to go. You know, some people play those sad songs when they're going through breakups and stuff. Is that have you ever been that kind of person? Oh, yeah. I think music helps me just even in my in my art, in my craft. I listen to music whenever I need to get into character, a certain vibe, a certain <laughs> mood or certain energy. I think yeah. music can can help with with that but yeah i've definitely yeah. cried myself to songs in my in my especially in my teens <laughs> yeah yeah i feel you like i used to do that I, in like middle school i would write like poems but it would be from like boys to men like stuff that these yeah. girls probably never heard of like you know some old school stuff uh, mm. but music um taught me a lot about life in, in a sense you know it, it showed me my emotions as a man like i'm over here like it's like watching a sad movie and you, you're trying to make sure other people aren't crying with you. You know, like you're you're crying, like that one tear is coming out. Um, that's oh, I'm it. crying a lot. I have no shame in my game. I yeah, <laughs> I cry in movies. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, but those are the good movies. I think. Um, so the Greatest Showman. Have you? Did you see the Greatest Showman? I did. I did. Did you cry? <laughs> I probably did. I mean, if okay. there's yeah, I, I saw it a while back, but yeah. I'm trying to think of the latest movie I would have seen. I saw Elvis. Did Elvis? I cry? Yeah, that was so good. Yeah. Um, talk about music that moves. Yeah, moves I gotta soul. watch that then. Yeah. But good. I know I I just I just say the greatest showman because I don't know when I watched it, but I always remember the way I felt when I was watching mm -hmm. the movie, and it was like I don't I it was probably silly, like it was somebody living their dreams and it made me cry um, yeah you know i think I that's a beautiful it. Sometimes thing it's not even because it's sad it's it's, it's it's a moment that's so beautiful that mm. it brings you to to tears yeah yeah come on now let's talk about it <laughs> that's 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 in i think we were talking before we uh we went live you know um you, you talked about a friend and like watching her like succeed and how you rejoice with her in that you know um i think it's the same thing like when you connect through through uh films you know um it's amazing no absolutely i mean it's the power of empathy and and yeah like sometimes you I remember as a kid, I would actually, whenever something bad would happen to my sister, I would cry mm -hmm. for her. Like, and she'd be like, why are you crying? And I'd be like, I don't know. I just, I'm so sad for you. <laughs> and, and I think that's, you know, oftentimes artists, especially actors, like we uh -huh. can really just feel the other person <laughs> and what they're going through. Yeah. But to others, it's like, you're a weirdo. Stop yeah. crying. This isn't yeah. about you. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't about you. Stop this crying. isn't about you. Yeah. This know. isn't your moment. <laughs> no, exactly. Me stealing the moments. Yes. Yeah. Whoops. But uh, but yeah, I think this this is awesome though. I, I love that. And I hope that people anywhere and everywhere, if you're feeling down or blue, that the 10 minute mix like helped you out. Mm -hmm. Um, if not, please go back and watch it. Or uh, we're about to do something here, and I call this uh <laughs> I made this up last night. So hold on, let me pull it up. It was uh I was watching something. Uh, <laughs> I'm calling this the Maya warm up. Okay. So the we're going to breathe and share Ooh. a word to describe how we are feeling. Um, I saw, I, th I saw you do that somewhere. Yes. And, um, you know, I, I was like, oh, you know what? I want to have Maya lead us into that uh, before Whoa. we jump off. So we had a great music mix. Now we're about the transition and I want Maya to go ahead and lead us into this breathe. And then we're both share 
a word that describes how we're feeling today. How about that? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. So if we want to just close our eyes and tune in to ourselves, Whew. just a deep inhale and exhale, just really centering into our lower bellies, checking in with our entire body, being fully present, noticing the air coming in and out. And slowly opening your eyes. And give us one word, Alan, that would describe the feeling that you're feeling right in this moment. I feel alive. Mm, <laughs> that's a good one. What about you? Oh, surrendered. Mm, I like that. I feel like I'm in a little poetry club. Like we go yes. <laughs> When, whenever I feel surrendered, I'm like, Jesus, take the wheel. Take the wheel. Oh, the wheel, the Jesus. Wheel. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Like, so alive and surrendered, right? Like surrendering, right? Like, when, what does that look like in your life? Like, at this time, I know you spoke of, I asked you a question in Instagram. I was like, you know, what is this season of your life like? You know, and I, I was expecting like something like, well, just uh, never stop, never quit, repeat. I'm just playing. <laughs> But you were like truth, you know, that's your word for this year. So yeah. with that meditation and uh, just the, the moment of just being present, um, what does that 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 word truth mean to you right now in this moment of your life? Speaking my truth is something that I really haven't practiced enough. And I mm. feel like quite the opposite. My youth was all about masks, social masks and people yeah. pleasing and trying to fit in to a certain norm. And at this moment in time, and maybe this year more than ever, because I made it my word of the year, mm. I feel like I'm fully discovering myself. And I'm also brave enough and courageous enough mm. to speak the truth. And yeah. as hard as it is sometimes, because, you know, there are challenges that come along the way and we feel like we need to mask, we need to hide behind a facade. And, mm -hmm. and just this year, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to be brave and just hmm. tell the truth. Even if it hurts others, even if it hurts myself, even if it makes me embarrassed yeah. or makes me feel lesser than it doesn't really matter. I hmm. just, I want to be me. Wow. Wow. And that sounds like total freedom, you know, like it sounds like, yeah. you know, uh, Mike, so Mike Hill, I had sent the, the inbox with you and him and Stephanie, right? But Mike Hill is one of those uh, people that is right now, truth is, is what he's doing, like in his book and everything, right? So, Ooh. you know, so like, it's like living in your truth and being unapologetic about who you are. And I even heard you say in an uh, interview before you were saying like, it's like, okay, I'll own up to it if that's, you know, if, if that's the case, right? Yeah. 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 And I think you, you nailed it. I think I'm gaining so much freedom yeah. in just expressing myself. And, and that means vulnerability. That means mm. speaking things that perhaps I've been blocking or hiding for years. And, mm. and with certain people, even that are close to us, sometimes the truth is even harder because there's mm. just been this long ongoing lie or this <laughs> ongoing cover or mask yeah. or shield that we've been protecting ourselves from. Mm. And I think once, once that it, you realize people are people, people mm -hmm. will all be okay, no matter what, you know? Yeah. 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 It's true. It's true. And I, I think that, uh, the truth with the ones we love and then safeguarding our own hearts in the midst of all of that, you know, I think is, is very important. And, you know, when you were leading this, this exercise, this Maya moment here, when we were uh, centering ourselves, um, it, it, you know, for my uh, VA, uh, it's like a speech uh, training thing they do for PTSD veterans. Um, but she's had me do like 15 minute meditation segments um, while we're having our uh, session. And at first, um, you know, I was like, man, my ankle hurts. I have this chronic pain in my ankle. Um, just a lot going on in life. Right. And the way you let it, right. She close your eyes, you know, and uh, just, just 
be aware of everything within you, right? Not even just around you, but within you. Um, and I, I was like, oh my God, like she was messing with my mind at this point because all day I was worried about everything else outside mm -hmm. that what was going on inside of me. I was so unaware. It was like living, being in a house and, and doing everything around the house, but uh, not resting and not mm -hmm. acknowledging um, your, your, your space and where you are. So how do you manage that? Like while life is, is busy and you're, you're, you're out there trying to get new roles um, and you have your family, how do you just stay present and, and be aware of yourself? You know, I think that you, you said it. I think for me, meditation, I don't know how people survive without meditation. I have no yeah. idea. Um, Cause I know I, I would probably be, dead in a ditch somewhere. But I, yeah. I, every morning, 20 minutes to center myself. And then in the afternoon, mm. I find those 20 minutes to just, you know, and, and I'm not perfect with it by any means, but right. if I don't have quiet time at some point and check in with myself and you're right, mm. it's oftentimes not about the outside world. Mm -hmm. Cause if I'm, if I'm not good with myself internally, I can't be of service the way I want to be of service. And so yeah. if I'm good with myself, and if I can center, then, then I'm able to, okay, what's going on? Like, how can mm -hmm. I not only be of service, but handle any challenge mm -hmm. that comes my way in a, in a way that is graceful in a way that mm -hmm. is authentic to me. Yeah. Come on. Let's just, just people where, <laughs> wherever you are, just, just you feel so good about myself. That, that, that's, that's so deep. And that's so real. Like, I love what you're saying because people need it right now. You know, we're, People are working from home, COVID, the trans transitioning um, in life so, and yeah. everything happening, right? You know, and I'm, when we interviewed the first time, 2020, like the pandemic was just like, you know, a new thing. The booster shots weren't even being talked about at that point in time, um, <laughs> you know, uh, and you were just newly engaged. So like you had a, you had a bunch of things happening. You had fatal affair. You got something? Yeah, no, you knew that I was engaged before I anyone. I, I think did. our podcast was the day after I got engaged. And I was yeah. like, okay, off the record. Off the record. <laughs> <laughs> and then I told you after, I was like, I just got engaged. Yeah. Um, but yes, yes. <laughs> life has changed drastically since yeah. then. Yeah. So, but being aware is something that we need to do. Uh, just in, a, in any uh, field that we're in, if you're unemployed or employed, um, just being aware of, yourself self-awareness um can oh, bring about so better right. service you talk about serving others like people we want to serve others we want to go out there and do our job work 40 hours or do whatever it is that we do but we don't even service ourselves no and nothing will happen until we hmm. find that healthy selfishness because hmm. i think for too long there's been such a bad connotation with being selfish mm -hmm. and at the end of the day i mean we can call it whatever we want. Maybe it's the word that we don't like, but self-care, self-love is, mm -hmm. is, should be such a priority in our lives. Yep. <laughs> because if we don't prioritize our self-care, our self-love, then, then it'll, it'll mirror the outside world. It'll yeah. mirror whatever is going on outside mm -hmm. of us. But if we're yep. full of love, full of care, we're like, woo, ready mm -hmm. to go. Yeah. Yes. It's true. I think we we project we project what is inward, right? Like what's inside of you will come out. That's I love that saying because like, you know, there's been moments when I thought and I, I know you've said this a lot of times in interviews, like, you know, I, you know, just because I'm this gratitude practitioner um, doesn't mean I don't have bad days or I don't get upset. Oh right. Gosh, um, no, I am so far from perfect. Yeah, absolutely. But when when we realize that, like, OK, I realize and I recognize my imperfections um, but I, the only way I am able to do that in a positive way is if I'm internally uh, looking within and having empathy for myself yeah. uh, for who I am. Right. Exactly. Um, and, and I think you're, you're nailing it. Like I, I always think of the four agreements and, mm -hmm. you know, speaking impeccably, not making any assumptions, not yeah. taking anything personally, but, but the main mm -hmm. rule of all is always do your best. So even yeah. in the shittiest of situations part of yeah. my french like if you can do your best with the, those given circumstances that's mm -hmm. all you need you just yeah. need your best at that given moment and Come sometimes your best is not that great let's Come be on. honest <laughs> but, but it's still your best right you know yep it's yours yeah. it's your it's your best i love that you know because 
I think when we compare ourselves, we fail ourselves because, you know, our best and, you know, my best and Oprah's best are two different things, right? Um, you know, and her best is good enough for her and my best should be good enough for me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but when we're in that comparison phase and I, I mean, as an actress, you know, you have yourself where you are and then you have other people who may have been in the game longer or just as long as you and they're at different places so Absolutely. how do you how do you do that how do you manage um maya in her space and still be at your best you know i think again you're so on point i think just quitting the comparison game is so huge and i think yeah. social media is is such a big promoter of mm -hmm. comparison and we mm -hmm. get stuck in like well she did it better oh my gosh how is she just so flawless and <laughs> whatever it is she's doing even if it's like picking yeah. up the trash and you're like wow she looks so amazing <laughs> right. um and i think if you can just really stay in your lane i kind of look mm -hmm. at those horses that have the the visors to the mm -hmm. side yeah. And just, you know, we want to be aware, of course, of what's going on, but mm -hmm. it's really your own journey. At the end of yeah. the day, you're going to be on your deathbed and you're not mm -hmm. going to be thinking like, oh, you know, Alan and his <laughs> podcast, like that was really good. I wish I could have done a podcast like that. No one's right. going to care. Like what <laughs> right. you're going to look at is really your own path, your own journey, mm -hmm. how you serviced people. Yeah. No one's going to remember. We talked a little bit prior to the podcast about mm -hmm. looks and mm -hmm what that is like you yeah. going gray me having gray hairs too you know like what does, <laughs> yeah and and at the end of the day that is so irrelevant mm -hmm. and we're all trying to of course look our best and i think it's there's it's important of course to take care yeah. of yourself physically but at the end of the day people will remember how kind you are mm -hmm. how you showed up for them mm -hmm. and you know the people that have marked me the most in this lifetime so far yeah it's not like I'm like, oh, they're really all just like really good looking. Yeah. Like almost, <laughs> like almost not. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like almost uh -huh. not. And it, it's, it's more about just how they impacted me with mm -hmm. their characteristics, with their, their love and, yeah. and just their glow of energy. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if I answered your question. I no, that's no, that's good. A massive tangent, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yes, yes. Yeah. So this is probably how I I stay with myself. Is I often mm -hmm. I do I often look okay end of life. What's going to really matter to me? Yeah, you know yeah. I don't I don't stay stuck in the small sticky stuff that that is mm -hmm. meaningless. Yeah. And that's what that's what I, I love. I love how you're talking right now. I love even all your interviews. You're you're the same person. You never change. You keep <laughs> the same. I mean, that's authentic. I, you know, mm -hmm. so that means you're authentic. I guess the brand Thank has you. been tested. Um, you know, it's it's consistent. Uh, you know, and I love how you look at life because that is, that is how I look at life. And people, I feel like people look at me crazy when I say I look at life from the grave because yeah. I am aware of the life that I have and the life that I. I am going to lose. So based on the fact that I have this life and I, I will lose this life, how do I want to live now? Mm -hmm. And I believe the power of now is what dictates who you are later. You know, if you decide right now how you're going to live your life, your later is going to be greater. I'm over here preaching a sermon. Your later yes. is going to be yes, great. <laughs> You got it. No, it's so true. It's so true. Uh, I, um, I, I, I heard this somewhere, so I'm not going to take credit for it. Yeah. I just don't remember where, but like on your deathbed, if you were to watch just a, a highlight movie of all hmm. the incredible moments, you know, mm -hmm. like what are you going to remember and what's going to be completely insignificant that is right mm -hmm. now a worry in your mind, you mm -hmm. know, like it's, it's just, it's it's that's why surrendered perhaps was yeah. the word that I was feeling is because, mm -hmm. OK, there are things that are going to flow into your life that are not necessarily in alignment with how you would like to feel. Right. But if you just surrender to it, that's that's mm. the key. It's not like pushing against it or mm -hmm. resisting or strangling it. It's like, no, yeah. how can I just surrender and just breathe mm. and know that like. Meh. Yeah, this is insignificant. It'll be taken care of. I can just surrender, you know. Surrender. 
Come on now, surrender. You know that, and that's a that's a powerful word. And even in self defense, surrendering is powerful in two ways, right? So I just thought about this last night. I was in my garage listening to uh, some of your interviews and like watching some of the movies. Uh, the you know, so I was just trying to just like get myself around my Estonian clever, right? And I was in the garage just doing some shadow boxing after you know seeing seeing some of your movies and stuff, just trying to get right on. <laughs> you I know. Love it. Yo, DEA wow. agent over here. So like, I was trying to get right. And, um, but in the midst of that, I was like, you know what? And when I think about the military and how I, I was trained with fighting, um, mm -hmm. and when you're, when you're getting, uh, beat on, right. And you get into this, you put yourself in the ball to protect yourself in a way, but you keep your foundation, you keep your stability, right? Because you're, you're, so you seem like you're mm -hmm. not, you're surrendering because you're not swinging, but you're really preparing yourself to strike you know you're preparing yourself to strike so i look at that in life you know sometimes when you know i think when i was talking to you i was finishing up college and i was i said i told you i was like yeah my i applied for some jobs and i didn't get this job um you know and and that was so 2020 i look at where i am now you know and with with the baby and and with my job now and i'm like wow i surrendered to the quote unquote failure but because it did not make me a failure, um, mm -hmm. I surrendered to the failure and what I was trying to succeed in. I did not succeed. So I did fail, but that does not make me a failure. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, that's a strike right there. Bam. Now I'm still moving forward. So um, anyway. <laughs> no, I love that. I love that you're saying that. And so oftentimes yeah. we're fighting for something and it's, it's creating a loss. Mm. And when we can actually realize that by surrendering by waving the white flag that uh -huh. often means peace peace and serenity uh -huh. like what would you rather be in mm -hmm. you know this fight that's ongoing but you're you're in your mind <laughs> thinking like i may win or i'm mm -hmm. winning still yeah or you surrender and something glorious happens from that mm -hmm. surrender whether it's peace whether it's actually winning <laughs> and, yeah, right. or whether it's love or you know but but there's something on the other side and you're so right there is no such thing yeah. as failure you Come know on. there's no such thing it's redirection mm -hmm. i mean i say yeah. it all the time because i get rejected every week you know multiple <laughs> times a week i'm just yeah not in constant rejection <laughs> but every time i'm like oh okay well next moving on you know yeah. next this one yeah. wasn't meant for me moving on you know mm -hmm. um but it doesn't mean you know not to mistake fight with fight like there is mm -hmm. fight in me there is right. hunger in you mm -hmm. it's just a different kind of fight mm, come on you now it's it's not the fight that you're at war with something you're yeah. the, you're in that loving fight yeah it's like chess you know, yes. like you're, you know, you're in a battle, but the moves are gentle and it has mm -hmm. purpose in the direction that you're going. Right. Um, Absolutely. So on, I'm getting all excited over here. <laughs> we, we, we over here talking about, I, lo I love this though. I love this. And this is what kind of interview I love. I, I love having authentic conversations, mm. um, you know, because while we're all in different fields in life, we're all at different stages in our life um, and different chapters in our life. Uh, there's mm -hmm. something that is consistent and that is life, right? Life yeah. is consistent. Time is consistent. It is. Con and time is really a, a figment of our imagination because we can't even uh, just possess time in our own hand. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And you have to decide in your life whether you're going to have the sand slipping from your fingers or if you're going to be running over that sand that's that's going through the hourglass saying, I am using my time the way I want to use my time um you know so that that way when you fail like my if i if i'm this like never stop never quit guy right and i tell my wife all, all the time i'm like man work is stressful i just want to quit you know i just want to go out there and do something else right right yeah. never stop never quit and it's like okay i have to remain consistent and my fight has to be strategic how am i going to use my job uh to launch myself in a place where I want to be in the future so that I don't need a job. Um, you know, so like just thinking like that, okay, now I know the purpose of where I am now. So my question mm -hmm. to you based on that is what is the purpose of Maya right now? Like where you are right now, um, mm -hmm. what do you feel like, you know what, this is, this is my purpose right now. My purpose right now, you know, the first word that came to mind is to create. Mm. So to create love, to create art, to yeah. create 
abundance and and all this is global it's not hmm. it's for me for you for us yeah. you know it's it's for all for the good of all you know mm -hmm. and and create just seems like such an appropriate word for yeah. me right now where yeah. I, I really feel like I'm I'm in this creative mode and where I'm just growing and expanding and mm -hmm. and yeah I, mean, I think my purpose yeah. is to to create and to give constantly give of yeah. myself to to myself and to others you yeah. know come on I like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you said to myself and to others because in your creativity, um, I also always feel like I'm about to go into a speech. In your creativity, <laughs> but um, <laughs> in your creativity, you know, I I think it's so important for us to enjoy uh, what we create. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and I told uh, some of my friends the other day, I was like, um, would you bury a diamond that you created? Uh, you know, and, and I say that because we have things that we create, like I create the purpose pod. Uh, when I, when you came on the purpose pod, it was an idea that I was like, I'll interview 30 people in 30 days, you know, and I'm going crazy with it. Right. And, and, and so like, when you get to that place where you create something and then you see, oh, this is not working the way I thought it was going to work. Do you bury the diamond? And I say, no, you, uh, rebrand, repackage and remarket that thing, you know, like you, you That's chisel the diamond to, into a, if it's a big diamond, you make it into a smaller diamond for a necklace or a ring. Um, you just don't throw the diamond away. A hundred percent. It's so funny that you say that. Cause I, someone asked me this just recently, uh -huh. you know, what work are you really proud of that you've done? Mm. Yeah. And I was incapable of answering. And, mm. you know, I often look back at my work and I, and I cringe and I, and I, and now like, later on work I can watch and I can be like, okay, yeah. that was a good moment. That was beautiful. <laughs> that was yeah. not whatever. Yeah. Um, but I look at it as like, no, my, my, it's cause I've grown. Mm -hmm. It's cause I've, I've expanded my knowledge of the craft mm. of acting. And, yeah. and it would be weird if I was like proud of every moment of my work. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm proud that I have accomplished this much. And what mm. I, but like, when I look at that work, I'm like, oh, I would have done this different. I would have done that different. Yeah. But, but it was perfect for where I was. And it's every mm -hmm. step of the way I'm evolving. And perhaps the work that I do today yeah. in 10 years time, I'll look back and I'll be like, oh boy, you know, but, <laughs> well, stop, thank you. but the truth is in the moment, you know, I, I was at my best. That was yeah. my best. And I yeah. have to keep reminding myself of that, you know? Oh man, come on, man. That's, oh, this is right where I need this conversation to be like, I just, in my life and in, in life in general, um, you know, because it's like, like I look at uh, older interviews. Like I went back and watched the old interview from 2020, right? You when me and you it. sitting there, and I was like, "Oh God, what was I thinking? Like, what was <laughs> I doing?" And um, you know, uh, I, but like with you saying that, it brings more positivity uh, into yeah. the way I think, and I think that's why it's beautiful to have these discussions because now it's like when I was looking at, it, I was like, "Oh, that's terrible," but it's true. I I've gotten better as an interviewer and a podcast host. And that's why I can look back at Alan from 2020 and be like, oh, God, brother. Yeah, you know, but you I was do. at my best right then and there. Come on. Absolutely. Come and on, you're God. growing, you're evolving. And that's why now you're able to look back and be like, whoa, mm. that's it's because there's such a big difference. But how awesome is that? How great right. is that? Versus like, well, I guess I haven't changed. I guess I'm just where I was exactly where I was in the <laughs> same, you know, and yeah. instead we're like, wow, like, yeah. you know, I can do better. I can mm -hmm. do better now. Great. Yeah. And that's 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 a powerful thing. Like uh, and I was thinking about you with acting and you know, with with people winning Oscars and different stuff like that. Like, is that one of your goals? Like, do you so because you can have goals and you get there and it like it loses its meaning because it's like, oh, I got this award. Um, so is that something that you're you're looking forward to, or what, what's that like for you? More than anything, I am looking to work and do what I love for the rest of my life. Like mm. that's my goal is yeah. to never work a day in my life because I love my job so much. Yeah. And acting is that for me. Mm. And the things that go with it, like having mm. a platform to be able to serve and, and yeah. you know, be a voice for those that may not have one. But yeah. ultimately, like 
the people are always like, oh, don't you want to be in like a big blockbuster movie or whatever? And yeah. I'm like, sure, yeah, that would be awesome. That's right. that's of course that's part of the dream. And and mm -hmm. I would love an Emmy because I would love TV. Like that's my mm -hmm. dream. Probably yeah. is to be like a series regular on a show. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is there? You know, all of that is amazing, but ultimately I'm already living my dream. I get to do what I love. You know, I get to to wake up and I know the next acting job is coming, you know, and that's, yeah. that's all that I need to know. I'm yeah. like, all right. And I, you know, it helps that I had now have this family that, mm -hmm. that grounds me and, and, you know, my husband is definitely that for me. And, yeah. you know, we, we both have the same ambitions and, yeah. and destinies. So it, it yeah. helps. Yeah. That alignment is uh, definitely needed. Uh, when you're some, wants to live uh in truth um in in all of your truth meaning what you were built you know because we have a capacity right like there's an end date like we were talking about there's an end date for your life so there's a certain amount of capacity that you can possess um but i, I love how you're viewing it because right now you are living your dreams um and you know mm. we can we can look towards the the future but it would be silly, like the Bible talks about this. Like it's like it's silly to talk about tomorrow, right? Like we all plan for tomorrow. We plan for this this interview, and I'm so glad that you and I are alive. Your family as well, mm. my family as well. So like it's good that this this date worked out and it is going as planned. And even better, right? Because we're alive in this moment, we can say like, yes, I live for this moment. So I, I look at you and what you do, okay. and I've the films, and like when I shared the story mm. on Instagram with. Uh, some of the things you've been in, like your your work. And I was like, man, this is powerful, but this is the noun. Um, man, it's going to be crazy for the future, Maya. You know, I can't wait for Maya to come back for part three, you know, two years from now, and we're, we're re-talking about all this stuff. Oh my gosh. Can I just say something, Alan? Yeah. You are one of the most supportive people I know. <laughs> Thank you. And the <laughs> way you support, you just go out of your way and you just yeah. like it's it's really an extraordinary quality of yours and it's coming back to you tenfold because you yeah. you give so much of yourself you've connected me to incredible people stephanie yeah. who i now call a friend but yeah. but you're just that person that just like wants good for people and i'm just yeah. so grateful to have you in my life i just wanted to Thank say you. that oh. just little snippet so that everyone knows <laughs> just how extraordinary you are because it takes yeah. It, not a lot of people are like that. Not a lot of people are gushing about other people. And I think yeah. that's such a great quality. We need more yeah. of that. Thank you, Maya. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I appreciate that, Maya. I'm about to, I'm about to take that snippet out and play it on every episode. Because that was just- <laughs> Please do. Please it's do. perfect, I, you know. I stand uh, in my truth. <laughs> I stand in my truth. And, and you know what? Standing in your truth and recognize recognizing like what you have and who you are and what you've done. Um, I, I know, I, I think, I, like I said, I heard you say it in an interview, like, you don't want to boast. You don't want to seem like you're boasting or bragging. But hey, this is your work. This is, mm -hmm. this is who you are. And you saying that I'm smiling ear to ear because I literally- uh I'm intentional about who I am you know and I'm intentional about remaining authentic on social media um like the same way you see me promoting you like people in my life personally will be like yeah that's Alan like that's who he is like if you uh if you need something like Alan's there um he'll tell you the truth he'll keep it real with you you know yeah. um and he'll have a good time so that's and that's what that's my life thing right there like Maya when I die I want people to be at my funeral sad as you know what, because I'm gone. Of course, you're going to be sad. You better be sad. You better be crying. Uh, you might have to get some new clothes. We'll, when you will. Need my we will. we'll right. all be crying. We'll yeah, all make sure. Be crying. I'll make sure. <laughs> you um, know, but, but then in the, in, in the midst of that, uh, Maya, and I, I'm sorry, I'm like raised Southern Baptist. I'm like, in the man, midst love of it. that. Hey, I started off by saying, Jesus, take the right, You did, you did. You took us um, to the gospel, yes. girl. But uh, <laughs> but in the midst of all of that, I, you know, the, the valuable part about life is that you live, Maya, the, that you've lived um, all of our accomplishments, all of the things that we've accumulated over the years. It just means that we lived. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so powerful. Um, so, like while we're at this moment, uh, at this moment, Maya, um, like what are you thinking for for the next chapter of your life? Like what would you want it to look like? Hmm. I want to continue to create. Number one, mm -hmm. I want to continue to 
you know, cherish my family and, and know the treasures that I have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm very motivated with my career and that's, that's wonderful. I love that. And I just never want to lose sight of what truly matters. And for me, that's love for Mm -hmm. me. Like I just want to be surrounded in love and I Mm -hmm. want to represent love and, if I'm ever outside of that realm, I just want to reshift my thinking because yeah. ultimately, like, yeah, you can have all the money in the world and you can, you know, have all the Oscars and everything. Mm-hmm. But if love isn't around, like, that, mm-hmm. really, there's no point. And that, I think that's yeah. why, you know, relationships, the relationships you have with mm-hmm people are so key and so important yeah and we were talking about it with my husband and my husband mm-hmm. is so funny we're so different but he was <laughs> asking me he was like well who who do you hate like yeah. who who is someone that you hate and i was like honestly mm. i don't like there's there's no one that i hate and if i yeah if i ever got close to that i i would be very shocked just because mm-hmm. Like to, to me, like, this is all like why I do what I do. I get to yeah. put myself in the shoes of people like that, that mm. would be considered hateable Evil. and, and there's just, I mean, sure. There are people that are doing horrendous acts, mm-hmm. but do I hate them? Do yeah. I wish ill will on them? No. Yeah. Um, so I can't remember where I was going with this, but like love, 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 Mm -hmm. love. That's what I'm about. And Mm -hmm. if I ever got off, off that track, like that's Mm -hmm. where I would be center center myself. But in the next six months, yeah. Like continue to do what I'm doing. I feel like I'm on the right path. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I need to change anything drastically. I think I just need to stay the course Mm -hmm. and, you know, be a good human being and, really um perhaps surrender even more you know Mm, yeah come on i mean i think when you can surrender even more you're taking the i have the power um you know like the song i got the power Uh, power. (laughs) come on oh you hit the note i didn't i could i was afraid to hit the note i you know i didn't know how that was gonna turn out please don't Uh, say that who knows knows if i actually hit the note that's on repeat right there that was that's gonna be the first thing they see i got the power no, I love it. <laughs> no, but you know, like we we have to like you know surrender, and I love that word. I love truth. You know, um, you t- you know, you mentioned uh, facing fear, right? Uh, as as one of your things that you're doing oh. in this season. Um, so is that like with acting, or is that? Oh just my in life gosh, I have been facing a lot of fears. I have been <laughs> facing all the fears. Um, yeah. and and mostly that has come with speaking my truth and. Mm. And it's more because like, I am tired of fearing I'm worrying is a full-time job. Like if you know people that worry, like it looks like it's their job Yeah. and (laughs) and I'm like, that is not the job that I signed up for. That is not how I want to live my life. And Uh I, I think I was wired a certain way growing up. I think I had a lot of anxiety. I had a lot of OCD and it was all stemming from a lack of control and me trying to control mm. outside circumstances. Yeah. And that's funny that I chose the word surrendered. I feel <laughs> surrendered because it's the anti-fear. Mm-hmm. Whenever I fear, I'm like, surrender. Like, yeah. girl, surrender. <laughs> you gotta, you know, because... Yeah. Because ultimately, like, what is fear going to do? I think fear is important. It is a direction to take. But it's certainly not based in truth. Yeah. Um, You know, fear, false evidence appearing real. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And when you move fear to faith, (laughs) then you're really... You know, and you're, 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 you're completely switching your whole mentality. You're co- yeah. like fear is again, it's tense. It's strangled. It's, it's, you know, debilitating. Whereas yeah. surrender, it's like, you're laying back, you're swimming, you mm-hmm. know, you're I'm floating, flying. You're yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You know, that's, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Like I think about, uh, 
this this little parable i think one of my pastors told me uh pastor john Dawes, I, or so he i think he said something in a sermon and i might have made up my own thing with it uh when i was telling a friend about it later uh but you know it was about like this you know imagine yourself uh being at a beach and i know you love the beach right um <laughs> so imagine that you're at the beach and the sand represents your worries right um, and, and on the beach, there's usually not any trees unless they're just man-made trees. But let's imagine that uh, right now there's no shade, but you're on a beach and you're, you're looking at the water and faith is telling you to step out into the water, right? But you're so attached to the sand because the sand is comfortable. And you know that once you step into the water, it's going to be kind of uncomfortable, um, cold, right? Uh, it's a change in atmosphere or environment when you step into that water. But while you step into the water, you're still attached to the sand, right? Mm -hmm. Because you got that part where, you, you know, when you first walk in, right? So <laughs> now you, your faith is telling you to go deeper. And let's imagine mm -hmm. this ocean, this water being your purpose, right? And mm -hmm. your destiny. And, you know, to go along with what you're talking about, like as you, faith is telling you to keep on coming, keep on coming until you have to float. Right. And so you have to uh, rely on your own inner abilities, your innate abilities, like my friend Tracy calls it, like your innate abilities. And you got to trust a little, you know, that mm -hmm. as you move your arms, you know, and you flow through this water that you will not touch the sand, because if you touch the sand, you might die. You might die if you go under. But the best part is if you go down and you touch the sand, you recognize that you can push yourself back up by your own strength. Right. So. Wow. So in this part That's in the beautiful. story, um, there's the, when you when you when you're uh, when you realize that you're floating and you're no longer touching the sand, you have to look back at the shore and you see the trees because now your life is more fruitful because you surrendered. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there's somebody who is standing at the shore who needs you to tell them how to do what you did, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly right. Well, and you make things possible for people. Yeah. You know, like I look back, I hope this isn't like me tooting my own horn, but no, go ahead, I look it. back at like m m growing up in the middle of Switzerland, you know, mm -hmm. where acting is such a far-fetched idea. It's like yeah. no one from Switzerland is going to be an actor. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. <laughs> like no one from Switzerland is going to be on TV and an yeah. actor. But now I look at like even my little niece who wants to be an actress and I've made mm. that a possibility for her. She knows yeah. that it's possible and that makes me so happy. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just like, of course you can become an actress. And I, yeah. I didn't have that. I was sort of like, well, that's not going to happen, but yeah. you know, <laughs> that's fine. Right. I'm okay with it. Um, yeah. But now just like knowing that those little girls like know, like in Switzerland, middle of nowhere, milking cows, they're like, I can be an actress <laughs> one day. That's a possibility. That can oh, happen. You know? <laughs> said, um, cows. Is that what y'all do in Switzerland? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like bake bread and make milk cows go. No, I mean, it's not all of it, but there's a lot of farming and it's wonderful. Yeah. And I love it. But, <laughs> But yeah, you know, it's exactly uh, what you said. And it's it's so true, like being in the uncomfortable. I feel like I've mm -hmm. been so uncomfortable this year in so yeah. many ways. Yeah. Um, but in the best way. Like yeah. I don't, I don't at the same time, I don't want to be comfortable. Mm. Like growth happens happens in Come discomfort. On. Come on now. We dropping gems out here. Um yeah. <laughs> well, we say so ourselves, people are gonna be watching this. Right, I know, right? They're like, what was that about? <laughs> It's like you guys are way behind. Right. Um, <laughs> you guys are just talking about this. <laughs> no, but it's it's real though, and I think it's real relevant, you know. Um, and I was I was telling my wife, I was like, man, I was like, uh, right before I came up, um, I was like, man, I don't know uh how I want to do this interview. Um, I was like, you know, this is Maya's second time coming on the purpose pod, but you know, uh, I was like, she's had other interviews, and I feel like you know, in those interviews, like she's she's used to these interviews, right? Like there's a there's a there's a certain point where you you get the you start talking about films, you start talking about different things, your characters that you were, and you know, um, that was your job, and that's what you 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 did it. But I was like, I want to just I just want to talk to Maya, you know. And so when I sat down and uh, last night, I was so thankful that I heard you um, just do a segment of that, like just you know breathing and stuff like that. And I was like, you know what? Uh, so when I start off the show. I'm going to have Maya do that. And I didn't know what else the interview was going to look like. I was like, you know what, Alan? I'm just going to, hey, my faith is going to lead me into this part. 
and um, I've I've enjoyed every second of this interview. So oh, awesome. same. And you know, it's it's interesting because you can do these things as many times as mm -hmm. you want, but it's always new. It's always different. Yeah. And you're fantastic, number one. And mm -hmm. like. I acknowledge your growth and like you keep yeah. getting better and better as I watch you. And you. um, I just think, you know, even before every podcast that I do, I'm always like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the magnificent outcome of this podcast, because yeah. there's there, there is a surrender. It's the unknown, especially mm -hmm. when it's live. You're like, Oh, I hope <laughs> right. I don't say anything too dumb. You know? <laughs> like, who knows? But right. it's out there. Right. Um, but you know, you just talk about surrender, you know, that's, that's what, we do and mm -hmm. that's you know having faith in in the moment and yeah. being present and mm -hmm. just trusting that it'll all but you have the tough part like you yeah. have the tough job <laughs> answering questions is like Meh. yeah <laughs> you know? asking the questions is like yeah no no and, uh, and, well, <laughs> i don't know if you know this I, I don't tell many people but my first one of my first jobs in la was to host ufc fights ufc i was going to ask you a question yeah. about that it was on my paper but i didn't get there i was like oh i was going to ask you well about that. let me tell you that was the toughest job that i've yeah. ever had and that hopefully i'll ever get because <laughs> i was just i don't want to say i sucked at it i i i just didn't know enough and I was too young, mm -hmm. inexperienced, but you know, I, I did yeah. decent. You did good. But, um, but yeah, it was a rough awakening of yeah. like, I was not present in the slightest. I was thinking about the next question that I had to ask. So I was like mm -hmm. asking questions and then 0% listening to the answer. And then I was like, anyway, next question. <laughs> <laughs> so now that you, <laughs> moving you on. <laughs> wait, you didn't win. Oh, um, my bad. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. That's real though, and I, I I saw the um I was YouTube Maya Stallion and uh you know I saw the UFC thing I was like wait a second UFC um and I'm watching this Maya and back in like 2000 what you went on a deep it, dive then I did right <laughs> um I tried to do a little something um I love it but you know it, it that's so it was so cool to see that though I'm like okay so Maya was over here interviewing UFC fighters you know and they're you know, it's like after the fight, they're all sweating. <laughs> so no, how did you feel about that fight? Some of them have like <laughs> bits of skin like falling off, like bloody, you know, bloody everything. So, yeah. You know. But it, but I, I feel like that role. So let's just call it a role. Like everything we do as a brand, like you mm -hmm. yourself are a brand. I'm a brand. So when you were in that role, uh, in your brand, you were you were you were learning new tools and yeah. getting out of your comfort zone because interviewing people you have to get outside of your comfort zone and get outside of yourself um you know and trust the process you know talk so, about being uncomfortable yeah that was that was yeah potentially one and and potentially one of the biggest failure i mean i've had a lot of failures so um, but again, we don't call them failures, but I, <laughs> I like, I just remember the director just being so disappointed and frustrated with me. And he, he wasn't mm -hmm. a very kind person to be yeah. fair, but yeah. God bless him. We wish him well, <laughs> but I, I felt so inadequate, mm -hmm. you know, and, and mm. I'll always remember that. And in a, in a, in a great way, in a great way, in the sense yeah. that I still pushed myself to the finish line, you know, yeah. I didn't quit. I, I never stopped, never quit. Never quit, I didn't right? Quit anything. I just like I yeah. kept going, I kept moving. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you know, that yeah. says something, I think. Yeah. I mean, and that yeah, I mean, because you will have people, and I think that's the when you think about a, a test or uh when you're an athlete, you know, and your your coach does something on the side that you weren't expecting, you know, you're at practice and you're looking for this football over here. And the coach is like, I'm going to throw this football from this direction. And it hits you in the head. And it's like, you know what? Okay. You know, maybe I wasn't ready for that yet, but it taught me something. Um, so sometimes people do things to throw you off um, to see how you will respond um, because they want to say, Oh, you see how you responded. This is who you really are. Right. So um, if we're being authentic, we don't have to worry about, uh, somebody saying, oh, this is who you really are. Absolutely. And I'm just thinking of the most powerful people in my life yeah. have been the people that have told me I can't do something. Mm. And I like that. that's always been my greatest fuel is people rejecting me or people telling me like, that's not going to happen for you. And mm -hmm. with a certainty that would be very destructive. 
Yeah. I've had, I, I think I mentioned this in an interview at one point, but I had a psychic tell me that I was never going to be an actor. Yeah. I had a psychic tell me that I was never going to get married. Yeah. I had a psychic telling me like, yeah. and this was very damaging. Like yeah. for months I, I kept thinking like, because it's what you believe, mm -hmm. what you believe. And then all of a sudden yeah. I had to fight against that dragon. Like I, in coaching, I still call her the dragon lady. Like yeah. in my in my weekly coaching with with um, my life coach, she yeah, we still call her the dragon lady because she comes up every now and then with the story. Mm. And I'm yeah. like, no, you're wrong. Yeah, um, like but dragon. but oftentimes these people are your greatest gift because they mm -hmm. bring you back to mm. what's right for you, what you believe yeah. in. Yeah, come on, and it's only like you self check. Know. Come on, only you know. It's only like a self you know. self check. You know, like. If you say I'm a loser, uh, because you do the boo bullying, right? And if you say I'm a loser, if if that resonates with me because it's inside of me, then something's wrong. Um, if I believe that I'm a loser, and you know, like so, so if I call you a loser, and you know, you can't control what I say to you, but you can control how you evaluate and reflect on what I say mm -hmm. to you, um, or digest what I say to you. So if that doesn't resonate. Like that's not, I'm not a loser. So, I mean, okay, keep right. talking, you know, <laughs> you can listen, but always mm -hmm. be skeptical. That's oh. kind of my rule because, because it's yeah. whatever is tr rings tr talk about truth. Mm -hmm. It's whatever is true for you. Right. Like no one knows your truth more mm -hmm. than you. Yeah. And so it's, it's kind of how I feel about, I know we're going to go into like a little bit controversial, but it's, it's how I feel about vaccination. Yeah. I'm like, whatever is true for you, go for mm -hmm. it. Like people yeah. believe a certain thing and that they're like certain of it. And, and mm -hmm. that's the truth for them. That's like, then it's the truth. Yeah. You don't need to listen to any outside. You don't need to convince anyone. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, you know, my body, my choice, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I believe in that through and through. It's yeah. like it's 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 whatever f is within, and mm -hmm. it feels right. Then that's that's probably what you got to do. Yeah, and and I think I think that's a bottom line fact right there. Uh, no matter who uh, we are, like I think about you know with my faith, with religion, or um, anything like you you get introduced to these different beliefs and um, different opinions and thoughts. And some of these thoughts were in conversation before you were born and you come into this world and, you know, you know, your truth, you know who you are right in this very moment in time. So um, what I've been uh, able to do since we've last interviewed, I had a, a big life uh, moment where I was evaluating my beliefs, my my Christianity, like how I believe my my belief. Right. I was I was asking myself questions um, the, around the time um, that I started interviewing people on the purpose pod. And I had this uh, this vision. I feel like God gave me this vision mm -hmm. um, because I want to I want to hold on to that belief that I believe in God uh, because it gives me my truth gives me peace. Right. So whenever you you can accept your truth and say, OK, in this in this image of the person that I this being that I'm thinking about is God. So I feel like my truth gives me peace, right? I said, well, what is the, the true importance of my life? Like, is it to go to church? I was So this is my truth that I was battling. Is it yeah. going, to true, going to church every Sunday? Is it praying like this or doing like this or, you know, identifying myself like this? And as I was evaluating those things, Maya, I had this vision of the 1,000-year-old Alan in the grave, mm. right? You know, I had this, I had this vision, like, one day I'll be 1000 years old in the grave. What would he say to me right now? Because that person that I will be and the person that I am understand a common thing. And that is who I am. Um, so I, I think that's a powerful, powerful mm -hmm. weapon that now I can go talk to whoever, um, uh, a Christian, an atheist, a Muslim, um, a Buddhist, that's whoever, cool. and have have peaceful dialogue because I understand that my truth is my truth and their truth is their truth. And I should respect that, um, you know, so. Yes. Anyway, um, <laughs> so key, Alan, though, yeah. like respecting everyone else's truth. Yeah. Like. One thing that my husband and I, because my husband and I defer on a lot of views, which I think mm -hmm. is amazing because we grow so much more by being so different in yeah. our points of view. And it's like, I understand what you're saying. And also I disagree, but yeah. I'll, I'll happily disagree. 
You know, mm -hmm. like it's not like I need to now tell you why how I believe is better, you yeah. know? Yeah, it's true. Because once you recognize that your truth is your truth, you yeah. understand that their truth or her truth or his truth is their truth. You know, so like it's it's, it's so when I look at it and we're about it. So I have three questions after this that people oh, yes, uh, posted yes. on, on Gosh, Instagram. That went by fast. Holy yeah, it did. It did. Holy. But I, I just wanted to say this real quick is that, um, you know, in this day and age, you know, we have to be respectful of people's truths. And there are so many bold people um, in each corner. Like there's people in each corner who are just ridiculously um just selfish and they want their truth uh to be infringed on everyone else but if your truth has meaning uh in your life then you do it you have you serve your truth because you have to serve yourself you serve your truth in love so when you love people and christians they say love your neighbor as you love yourself so if you cannot see yourself in other people then maybe you shouldn't have a conversation or a dialogue about serious matters with those people. And I just had to say that because, you know, I see people tearing people apart um, no, and destroying people. Shaming. Yes. Yeah. There's, there's, there, there should be no shaming. And if you can't, I love that. Like if you can't, if Maya and I are having a, a dialogue about whatever, and uh, we don't come to the table saying, you know what, I see myself in that person and I can understand that whatever they believe in is their truth. I will listen now uh, to understand. Um, but you don't have to listen to be changed. Just listen to understand um, no, exactly. because through understanding you could do more. We listen too much to respond instead of listening mm. to hear. Yeah. Akeem said, Maya, you're dropping gems. <laughs> Akeem, Akeem got to get you on his podcast. Uh, unscripted. Oh, he, uh, I have to, I'm, 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 I'm a, a, so I'm going to, Maya knows me. I'm, I'm going to make that connection, Maya. Cause, uh, he's a, he's a dope dope brother yes. uh he's an olympian so we uh y'all y'all will talk sometime uh, <laughs> i'll make that connect but yeah so maya i i'm definitely uh enjoy this interview uh with you and i don't even call it a, i call it an interview because it's the purpose pod and it's like an interview but Our i feel chat. like we just had we jumped on the phone we jumped on a, a webex call and caught and up this is and by the way this is how alan and i speak offline as well yeah, we do we do like we do so it's real it's real and i i love that and um i told i told some people i was like man i, I love that i am who i am because i'm not like this person that has to be like in a sense starstruck right like i respect people for their mm. growth and how like mike hill stephanie showstack like you I, I respect your hustle and i respect how you guys are shining and i'm like you know what I, I love that. I want to be. I want to be around that. I want to be. You are that, that, Alan. You, know? you are. I am that. that. I, and that's because I recognize what you guys are uh, exhibiting. I see it in myself. Yes. Um. You know. So I'm like, okay. You know, like let's let's push this out there because people need to know about uh, how uh, it is possible. Like you said, your niece. You know, um, other people in Switzerland are seeing like this is possible. So mm -hmm. one day, some boy from South Carolina is going to see me and be like, oh a podcast like i i failed in english okay well cool you can start a podcast one day um absolutely so yeah so we have three questions and then we're going to close out and uh um Perfect. if anybody has questions in the audience quickly put them up if not i'm going to go ahead and do these uh for the people who put them up on instagram uh was working on set of castle awesome Yes. In fact, it was absolutely awesome. It was such a dream and everyone was so welcoming. And that's what I love about TV. You sort of become a family, you become yeah. a unit and you move together, you know, whereas mm. film, I feel like it's like, okay, you meet for a few months and then you're done. Yeah. But TV is, there's just like this family environment that just sticks with you. And yeah. Um, and yeah, I'll have lifelong friends, I believe, from that set. And I, it was just, it was heavenly. And now looking back, of course, I would have done everything different acting yeah. wise, but <laughs> it was my best at that given time. And I, it was one of my first big jobs and I was super nervous and also super overprepared. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, but that, that was you my very great. best. Absolutely. Yeah. You did. You definitely did great. Um, <laughs> so favorite acting classes in LA and coaches and prep routine for auditions Montana Ooh, um I saw that she's like an, she's an actress yeah she she makes these beautiful necklaces yeah she's okay so she okay so you know of her okay um, yeah I saw yeah, her check out Montana Marks she makes 
beautiful necklaces. She made me one. Um, so yes, favorite acting classes. I started with Ivana Chubbuck. I think she was a great person to start with. Um, her book is still my Bible. Um, mm -hmm. Margie Haber is incredible. I love her. She's so loving and nurturing. And then um, Casey Clyde, he's a series rag on a TV show. I can't mm. rave enough about him. He's a super talent, but also like a wonderful acting coach yeah. and who I'm coaching with right now, who is just such a sweetheart and my all-time favorite. And he's got years of experience. He worked with Philip Seymour Hoffman, like big names. And yeah. his name is Craig Archibald. And I love his technique. I, um, you know, it's interesting. You, you ask about prep routine for auditions. Mm. I, I am so immersed in whatever audition I get. Like my yeah. husband's always so in impressed. He's like, whoa, <laughs> like I will run lines a hundred times. I will yeah. dissect this human being and become yeah. it. And wow. um, I think, I think more so than anything is um, like, I, I do believe like preparation is key. So mm -hmm. do whatever works for you. Speaking of like whatever rings true to you but like incorporating all these different teachings that i've had i have 20 questions that i ask myself about like mm. the circumstance of this person like yeah who they are what their family is like but i go like i meditate as the person i go mm. in a day in the life of this person and yeah. um yeah. like yeah read books about acting still to this day. I'm reading Howard Fine. I'm reading Larry Moss. I'm reading. So yes, I am. Yeah. I believe in full immersion is yeah. the answer. That's a, that's, that's dope. And that, that speaks to me as a podcast host and what I've been, that's confirmation for me, uh, what I need to do. Uh, if I want to do this and do it well, I have to immerse myself in this. So uh, yeah, that's a, that's a message from Maya right there. Full Coach immersion. Maya. Yeah. Yeah. So are you, uh, my question would be, are you going to, uh, do you think one day, like you'll be a coach for, uh, new actors out there? So I do. I, I, I right now only coach, um, sounds weird, but I, I only coach actors that are like already working actors that are mm -hmm. series regs on shows. And I, okay. I, it kind of fell on my lap and I, I, I love it. And I think it's incredible. And yeah. And if any of you need coaching, please do reach out. Cause it's not like I discriminate, but I, <laughs> I do feel like it's, it's easier for me yeah. to work with people that already have a knowledge of the craft mm -hmm. versus, versus nothing. Yeah. Um, but the, the acting coaches that I mentioned are, they have from beginner to yeah pros, you know, they have yeah. everything, but I, I do love coaching. And I think it comes along with like my want, my future want to direct at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I love giving direction and testing different ideas and yeah. seeing what works and what doesn't. And, and that really, that that's a turn on, that's a switch on for me of like, you know, discovering yeah. new tactics and techniques okay so we're uh make sure you guys uh prep before you hit up my about some coaching <laughs> you guys need to be ready I don't mean, come from the purpose pod and say hey i want to be an actor and you uh you I, haven't read the first book i really would be happy to help anyone absolutely, absolutely. okay absolutely so that's what i love about my my cool people so <laughs> we have we have two more questions so yes uh, agent 33 was at times played by other actors on aos do you assist these actors in some way so the short so. answer is no. I think okay. they watched a lot of my mannerisms to mm -hmm. see like sort of how I did things or said things or moved. Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't there assisting them yeah. unnecessarily. I know that I took on a little bit of Mingna, the actress Mingna, mm -hmm. um, to kind of like morph into her. Yeah. Um, but but that was very ever so slightly because I was as myself, I was always myself, if that makes sense. Mm, yeah. So I hope that answers your your question. Yeah, they're they're I guess uh fictional fakes are are into you know uh, film and stuff. So that's I great. know <laughs> they know stuff watching. I love it. So Akeem says, How do you find balance at this stage in your life? Good question. Mm, you know, more than balance, I like to call it harmony. Like I try to harmonize, you know, I have three things. I have my work, my mm -hmm. craft, like how I really like just full immersion of acting. And that's, you know, 
it's a sub priority to family always. So like yeah. the the two of them, like I try to really balance out like my husband, I, I, to a fault, perhaps I love spending time with him. <laughs> so I'm, yeah. I'm always like, when can we hang out? When can we do stuff? He's super busy. I'm super busy, but we yeah. always, I think we always make time. Mm. And then the third part is being of service. And that's just as important to me. So it's, it's more that I try to harmonize all of them together. And if I can bring all three together, that's, yeah. that's the explosion of yes, like <laughs> I did it. So, yeah. so I hope that answers your question. I try to, I try to harmonize them so that they can all just be one, you yeah. know, it's all a part of me. Yeah. I think that was, that was, that was a good one, man. You, you were made for this. You were born for this. <laughs> I just want to shout out Sal, Adam. He's uh commented earlier i'm watching from the uk it's wednesday for me now <laughs> awesome 10 minute intro uh to dj davi so that's yes. awesome man and um i'm just very grateful for all who watch live and for all of those who will watch in the future we do appreciate you guys and gals out there um maya i want to ask you a question about uh what you want to say to the people like any closing words and then after i do that i have to do a quick uh shout out and then um, we'll end it. Do you need to go like right? Are you got like five minutes? You got you good? I've got five minutes. Okay, five minutes. <laughs> I know you got stuff going on, so I, I just need that five minutes, girl. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so yeah. Do you have any last minute words, encouraging words, like whatever you want to do or say at this mm. moment in time? I give you the floor. Well, since we talked so much about truth, it's just it's so much of it is I think finding what you love about yourself. You know and not being so harsh about it like sometimes yeah. sometimes the truth hurts even the truth about ourselves and finding those parts of ourselves that we perhaps don't feel as great hmm. about than others like still mm -hmm. finding a way to nurture them still finding a way to love them and perhaps they're going to be your fuel later on in life you know like yeah. i just think of my ocd or my depression or my anxiety and and those all led me to who I am now. They all made me mm. fight for something greater. And I think just, just self-love is, is so key. So mm. if you can just love yourself a little bit more after listening mm. to this, then, then I've done something right. Come on. Come on. The poet. The actress. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you 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 deep, my eye. You need to go ahead and put out a, a, a book of poems. You know, you sometimes to a fault, I think, but I'm yeah. I'm as deep as it gets. <laughs> yeah, I challenge you to write a book of poems. And, and, and Maybe I will one there. day. Maybe I, I will. Okay, cool. So I think I appreciate that, Maya. So I'm going to do these quick uh, shout outs real quick, and then Please, I'll, yes. um, I'll close that part, and then we'll have the little exit thing, and then bam, you can uh, jet out Perfect. of it. All right, cool, cool. So thank you, thank I wanted to definitely um, shout out DJ Davi for giving us a great intro on the Purpose Pod. He nailed it. Um, it was a definitely a, a dope mix. Check him out on Instagram at Go DJ Davi. Cool people network. We are able to network with cool people and stay tuned to the latest and greatest news out there. Uh, you can download the app Cool People Network. Shout out to Red at 28 in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a hookah lounge and bar where I frequent back in the day. And, uh, you know, I go in Charlotte and I hang out there with my friends all the time. It's a cool spot. Uh, Nikki cuts by Nikki. She always keeps her brother fresh with the fade now so nikki <laughs> out here in durham north kakalaka y'all check her out uh sean porter showtime sean porter the port away podcast he was a recent guest y'all check him out the michael fankley show shout out to my boy michael fankley and courtney starks shout out to courtney uh starks make sure you guys go vote for best memoir of the year courtney starks and shout out to my boy fode and for, for shooting this dope pick. And if you guys don't know, never stop, never quick repeat is trademark. And if you need or, or have questions about trademarking, please hit me up. I will make the connect for you. Shout out to my boy, Jamar Lanham for taking this amazing pick. Uh, marketing is one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but last but not least, Maya Stolian Clever. I am so thankful that she was able to come back for round two on the purpose pod. She blessed my life today uh, in so many ways. So when y'all see me next season, you'll see a better me because right now I am great already. So Maya, thank you for joining us here on the purpose pod. I appreciate you. Um, you. I'll do the outro and then just stay in the back office. Don't leave just yet. I just wanted to say goodbye after we get off here, but uh, just thank you so much, Maya.
Thank you so much, Alan. Thank you to everyone who is watching. I love you. I wish you the absolute best. And um, I can't wait to be back on your show. Let's make yes. it happen again. Let's let's, let's see what happen happens again. next time. Todd is coming. Her husband is coming in October. Woo, uh, so October. that's going to be awesome. Uh, hopefully he's still. Make sure you remind him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, in the, he's in the next room. So. Okay, Todd. So you heard that, brother. Uh, October. I'll hit you up. Um, but yeah, everybody. Maya oh. Stolian. Clever. Woo. <laughs> This has been another episode of the Purpose Pod, purposely driving you forward with power and faith. That was Maya Stoyan Clover. She is an amazing actress and producer. If you want to get hip with life and living life in gratitude, you need to connect with Maya Stoyan Clover. Amber Simmons, thank you. That's my wife. That's my boo. That's my little peanut. That's my baby mama. That's my girl right there. Y'all, make sure uh, you can't hit Amber up on Facebook because she is a ghost. But Maya Stoyan Clover, I appreciate you so much for being on the Purpose Pod. Please make sure you guys go follow her on Instagram. Stay tuned to what she has going on. Go watch. Go Google her and watch everything she has. Um, just go soak in Maya Stoyan Clever and enjoy the greatness that she offers to this world. This has been another episode of The Purpose Pod, purposely driving you forward with power and faith. I am your host, Alan Levi Simmons. Peace. Hands up,